Hi, this is Art and Architecture program. Today we have very special guest, Professor Kanishka Gunawardena. Kanishka started his architectural career at the University of Muratua as an architect, and after so many academic qualifications, he ended up with PhD in City and Regional Planning at Cornell University. Present day, he is a professor in Department of Geography and Planning at Toronto University. So, Kanishka, how you define this complicated subject called architecture? Architecture for me is a production of space. So, it, uh, so what architects do is they produce space, right? And uh, and uh, but, and we usually we when we think about space, uh, when architects think about space, we think about uh, material. Uh, physical three-dimensional space with all the uh, various uh, qualities uh, of such space. Uh, but the way I understand space, uh, and you know, I'm not uh, by any means unique in this kind of understanding, uh, space uh, is not only physical space, but it is also social space. Uh -huh. And uh, in addition, to this, uh, so 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 it's physical space, social space, and also uh, mental space. You know, the space of uh, uh, thoughts and uh, imagination, right? So uh, so when we say uh, architecture is the production of space, I think you know we are talking about uh, mental space, uh, physical space, and social space. Uh, all of these uh, aspects of space uh, taken together and architects uh, are, among others uh, involved uh, uh, centrally and primarily involved in the production of space right and so there's a lot of uh, of course uh, theory and uh, uh, philosophical political and other perspectives on the uh, this kind of production of space understood as uh, both uh, physical, social, ideological, cultural, and so on, right? But fundamentally, I think if you ask me to define architecture, I would say it is the production of space. Uh, yes, Kanishka, now you started with your career with an architecture, now you end up with the urban plan. So what will be the difference and the relationship between the architecture and urban planning? Uh, so the architecture, uh, we, so when we, if we think of architecture as the production of space, you know, so this kind of production of space can happen at various uh, scales, right? The spatial scales, you know. So the smallest uh, kind kind of thing, like like so, if you think about a you know like a phone like this or a pen like this, you know, so these are also objects that are uh, designed and they have a you know a physical. Uh, you know, three-dimensional uh, uh, aspect to it, but also a social and, you know, ideological and uh, mental aspect as well. Uh, but architects, you know, typically design uh, at the scale of uh, houses, buildings, yeah, interiors, you know, but the scale can vary quite a bit, you know. So sometimes as you, I'm sure as you have uh, uh, done in your own practice, you know, we design sometimes something very small, you know, maybe it is a uh, detail, you know, of a window or a, um, uh, like a, you know, small, uh, uh, like a little detail of something, a uh, piece of furniture, right? But, uh, but then we can go to the scale of the room, uh, a house, a garden, and, but this kind of, uh, uh, design or the production of space can obviously extend uh, beyond the scale of a individual house or building to a group of a complex of buildings, you know, so a whole uh, city block or a, the area of a city and indeed uh, to a whole city and the uh, surroundings of a city or a system of cities or a whole region, or a province, or even a nation, or, uh, and so on. So the uh, so this uh, the production of space also happens at various uh, spatial scales. So urban planning 
is the you know i would say the you know can be understood as the production of space at the scale of the city right uh, but this also of course involves uh, not just the physical uh, three dimensional material aspect of uh, space but also the social political uh, and other aspects of space and you know when we talk about urban design of course the political and economic aspects uh, become extremely important and we have to also consider uh, of course uh, as well the our relationship to nature right the environment yeah. uh, broadly speaking right? and this is extremely important and even for architects you know this is of course today becoming uh, an increasingly important and urgent uh, uh, issue to think about in our own practice yeah, that is to say our relationship with the environment and nature. Right. Yes, Professor. Now, what will be your view of the contemporary Sri Lankan architecture and urban planning? If you have any kind of suggestion to implement, then uh, you can come out with your suggestions. So this is a very big question, right? You know, so the... Uh, 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 yeah, so to be honest, you know, maybe this is a question for people... Uh, who are actually uh, engaged in practice, you know, in Sri Lanka. So I uh, respect and defer to, you know, their views on this matter. But uh, I can speak, uh, you know, since I, you know, after I left Sri Lanka in 1989, I guess, to for my higher studies and then for my present uh, uh, job at the University of Toronto as a professor, uh, since you know, the, since I left Sri Lanka, I have always uh, returned frequently, you know, and I have been engaged in conversations with, you know, friends like you uh, about uh, architecture and planning in Sri Lanka. So, so I'm also not unaware of some of the main uh, challenges, you know, and uh, issues that we have. But I will say, I will say, say address this question a little bit more uh, generally. Right. You know, so the and I think in any not just in Sri Lanka, but in any uh, any uh, city, any country, uh, the the, you know, architecture and urban planning are extremely important for the quality of life of ordinary people. Right. And sometimes this is uh, underestimated. Right. You know, so, for example, uh, when we think about uh, politics, right, you know, and quality of life, you know, we think about people's jobs, incomes, uh, you know, the education system, the healthcare system, uh, and things like that, very important uh, things, of course, you know, but uh, we tend to underestimate uh, the importance of the actual environment that we live in, you know, how this environment is produced, that is to say, the production of space, right? Uh, but I think the the space that we live in or the environment that we live in, and we call it the built environment, you know, the first degree that we did at the University of Monotu was actually called built environment, BSc in right. built environment. Right? So the significance of the built environment uh, uh, and the, the significance of the built environment for the quality of life of people is uh, something that tends to be underestimated, right? So I think the the most important thing uh, is that we have to uh, start thinking and also um, uh, as professionals and practitioners of architecture and planning and urban design and these kinds of uh, specialized fields, uh, we have to think how to make, we have to ask, you know, how do we improve the quality of life of ordinary people? You know, in in the country, so this is the most fundamental question. So the uh, the uh, uh, so not just in Sri Lanka, but in any uh, any city, I think some things are uh, you know some basic issues uh, are extremely important. So uh, I would uh, highlight, you know, given my experiences of living not only in Colombo but also. Los Angeles, New York, Berlin. Uh, these are the cities that I have spent some time in and of course Toronto today. So I think the affordability, you know, especially when it comes to housing, you know, is a very important 
uh, issue for people. So for like uh, housing affordability. And also related to that, uh, if you ask me the top issues is the uh, issue of uh, public transportation, you know, how people move around, you know, so I think, you know, in many of these uh, places like Los Angeles, <laughs> especially, uh, you know, people are ex uh, over reliant and over dependent on the car, right? You know, so the public transportation system is underdeveloped, right? And we know with the current, you know, environmental and uh, ecological uh, problems in the world today, you know, the, this kind of dependence on fossil fuels and uh, the private automobile, you know, is not a sustainable way of life, right? So we need to invest, uh, think very carefully and invest uh, a great deal more on public transit, right? Uh, so housing affordability and public transit uh, especially including uh, uh, bus systems, tram systems, uh, light rail systems for cities, uh, and uh, also between cities, uh, rail travel, you know, more than freeways, the highways for uh, cars, you know, I think we, sh we should think about trains, you know, and uh, more public and more sustainable forms of uh, transportation and especially public transit right so i would highlight you know housing and transit as the main issues uh, that are connected to uh, social justice that is to say equity in uh, the production of space but also uh, these are uh, uh, absolutely central to uh, you know especially the transit and uh, housing affordability will be uh, uh, central to um, uh, environmental questions as well, you know, the questions of environmental and social sustainability of uh, urban life. Yeah. Yeah, yes, Kanishka, now as we know that you started with uh, architecture and now you end up with the political science. So what will be the relationship be be between the architecture and the politics, especially in Sri Lankan context? This I can explain briefly, you know, with reference to sort of how my own kind of intellectual uh, and or professional trajectory. So I studied architecture like with you, you know, at the University of Morotua. And then uh, I started working. Uh, my first job was actually for our teacher, uh, Ranjit Talhakon. You know, so I had a very nice time. As you know, he's a great designer. Uh, so I really enjoyed working with him. Uh, but at the same time, of course, you know, this was in the late 80s when our country was in great uh, political turmoil, even a lot more than it is today, <laughs> you know, the, uh, the, uh, but uh, so I, we were kind of, uh, I think all of us, you know, who were politically aware and inclined, we all thought like, okay, you know, how can architects actually be of uh, use and service? you know, to the ordinary people, you know, uh, of Sri Lanka, right? And so I was always interested in the, uh, this, like the political aspect of architecture, right? And so this led me to my second job. So when I, uh, so my second job was uh, as an architect at the Urban Development Authority, you know, when uh, uh, President Premadasa was the minister in charge of urban development and housing, uh, and uh, so this was uh, this also gave me a like a good uh, inside view from the state you know from the government about how architecture and urban planning uh, uh, were pol pol uh, political you know were, were how these uh, professions were politicized right uh, and and this was a good uh, experience in understanding how the production of space you know, broadly defined, is actually a fundamentally political uh, uh, project as well, but also contested, you know, so people, different people have different ideas about, you know, how to do architecture and planning, but there's no question in my experience, uh, uh, there was no question in my experience that, you know, production of space was political, right? And, uh, you know, so working for the UDA, those days, uh, there, there, we could not have any doubt about the political nature of the production of space. So this made me interested in actually studying this a little bit more. 
and so i went to graduate school uh, did a masters in planning at the university of southern california in los angeles so this is also an incredible city to think about the politics of space right and uh, the so i started reading uh, various uh, writers about architecture planning and also cities like los angeles especially mike davis you know who's a uh, has been a very influential figure for me. He wrote this great uh, series of books about Los Angeles, starting with City of Quartz, uh, <laughs> which I have recommended to my friends, you know, in Sri Lanka as well. So the uh, uh, the uh, the so so re you know so all of this like led me to the, you know study more and more politic pol politics, you know. So that is to say, critical theory. Uh, various kinds of you know and and Marxism political economy and Marxist philosophy and you know and other strands of uh, uh, thinking uh, you know critical theory coming out of especially France Germany and Italy uh, building up in various ways on in on the Marxist tradition you know so this is what I did uh, uh, when I was doing my PhD you know reading a lot on this kind of uh, uh, critical theoretical uh, sort of perspectives, but also al always trying to relate them to the problem of the production of space. You know, questions concerning the production of space. So, so I think my intellectual work has been about you know how appropriating you know various uh, strands of critical theory to the uh, to investigations uh, on the on the production of space. Right. Yeah. Uh, and also, I would like to ask final question, Kanishka. Uh, what will be the uh, most suitable uh, political system to be adapted into develop this country, especially in Sri Lanka? So I, I should say, like you know, I, I'm not. I, I don't really do you know political science. You know, so the uh, the political science is a kind of a. I, I would say, like I, I my kind of interest is in more in political thought political philosophy, you know, but I'm not like formally in a political science uh, kind of department, you know, so the, uh, because it, what happens in those departments typically does not actually interest me that much. The, uh, but to come back to your question, the, you know, what is, uh, what kind of political system, you know, is good, you know, for uh, Sri Lanka or for that matter, anywhere, any country, any. Okay, I'll ask the question again, Kanishka. What will be the suitable political system to any kind of uh, country in the world? I think uh, uh, a system that is capable of uh, uh, resolving these enormous uh, contradictions, you know, in social <laughs> social. <laughs> Uh, relations and also like you know uh, con contradictions and problems in the way people relate to other people and also the problems in the way people relate to nature right so these are the biggest uh, problems that we have to deal with so obviously you know from my perspective uh, a political system uh, the, the a good you know political system would be one that is capable of addressing, you know, these fundamental contradictions, you know, so we can come up with various names, you know, for such systems, but more important than names uh, is like the, the is to identify, I think the problems, uh, uh, a political system uh, must be able to solve, you know, the main problems. So the two main problems are the inequitable exploitative, oppressive relations between human beings, right? Uh, on the one hand, and inextricably linked to that is the problem of the relationship of human beings to nature, right? And uh, so in, the, in our present age of, you know, so tremendous social inequality and injustice, and also environmental uh, uh, unsustainability and climate change, you know, these are obviously for me, the two major problems, you know, to speak in very general terms. So in my view, a political system that is capable of uh, addressing, you know, these fundamental problems will be the one that we should uh, work for. 
yeah that's all for the today thank you very much professor kanish gunardena for sharing your valuable thought with us and we can meet up with another day with another program with art and architecture thank you thank you very much anwar it's a pleasure to talk to you and uh, be with you always